All right, let's take a look at centrifuging blood to determine hematocrit. Now remember that hematocrit is the percent that red blood cells make of total blood volume. And for most people, that's somewhere around 45%. So if you want to test what somebody's hematocrit is, it's really simple. All you need is one of these little glass tubes right here called a hematocrit tube. And you can see this thing's real small. That way it doesn't take very much blood to fill the thing up. And you don't have to fill it all the way, but you'll see how that works. But what we're going to do is fill this with blood. Then we're going to plug the two ends. Just got some little Play-Doh-like substance we'll plug the two ends up with. We're going to put it inside the centrifuge, and we're going to spin this thing for just a minute or two. If you spin it for a minute or two, anything spun in a centrifuge, well, the heavy things will go to the bottom, the light things will go to the top. So all our red blood cells, heavy full of iron, are going to go to the bottom of the tube. And of course our plasma, which is much lighter, will be at the top. And once we've separated the cells in the plasma, all we need is a measuring stick. And that's what this little device is going to serve for right here. I know you probably can't see it, but the numbers on it go from 0 to 100. So after we've separated our reds and our plasma, we're going to put this measuring stick over the top of it and see how it's got different lengths of the 0 to 100. Well, you just put the red blood cells at the 0 mark and the 100 mark, whatever distance we need. That's why we got a lot of different ones right here. And then just look at the percent. And again, that's what hematocrit is. Don't forget, hematocrit's never just a number. It's always a percent that the red blood cells make of total blood volume. All right, so now we're going to need just a little bit of blood to fill up our hematocrit tube. All right, so we got a finger right here. Okay, gonna need some blood. Again, milk it and get some drops out. All right, squeeze it good, get some blood out of there. There we go, okay, and it'll just draw up into the tube when we touch, there we go. Okay, that shows you how much that was. So kind of squeeze it down, it's just like milking a cow right there. Draw up into the tube. I'll need quite a bit more with a cold finger. Of course, blood vessels tend to constrict and it makes it just a little bit harder and it is cool today. All right, that's just giving us a little. We need some big drops right there. Hang on. Little tiny cold fingers. It takes a little bit longer to get the blood out. Okay. Come on. <laughs> it's all right, squeeze it good. There we go. Now we start to get a little bit. See, you can tell it when it jumps into that tube. You can see it jump real quick. And I've noticed if you roll the tube, see it tends to draw it right off the surface of the finger. So you can see we've gotten some blood. It's maybe a third or so full at that point right there. And it doesn't matter if we have any air holes because that's all going to disappear when we spin it in that centrifuge. There you go, just squeeze it good. You can see it draw up in there. Looks like a lot of blood on the finger and then when it goes into that tube, it doesn't appear to be so much. All right, squeeze it out of there real good. Okay. We've got at least half the tube full. We'll see if we can go about two thirds or three quarters of the way there. <laughs> Okay, just keep drawing those bloods. If you can get a nice little drop on there, it draws up in that tube a whole lot better. That's why you always see the nurse squeezing your fingers so hard. Okay, keep on going. little finger. <laughs> okay. Slowly filling up just a little bit more and we'll be there. A few more drops. All 
All right, let's see if we can go with what we got right here. All right, so I'm just gonna take this little old stuff. It has, basically has the consistency of Play-Doh right here. And I'm gonna plug that in, and I'm going to do the same to the other. There we go. All right, so if we lift this up right here, we are going to drop this little glass tube down into that groove there. And this right here, of course, is going to hold it securely in place. So there's no way anything can get out of there, and it's even got another protective cover right here on top. So let's just set our little timer a little bit right here. And make sure we got power. I'll just turn the centrifuge on and off just to keep it spinning. And you can probably tell by the sound, it spins really fast. we had very many tubes in here, we'd have to make sure we placed them opposite of each other. That way it was all well balanced, but with just one of them, it doesn't have to be done. It should be just about separated. All right, we're going to let it stop and take a look at it. Slowly come to a stop right here all by itself. And we'll see if it's separated and we'll take our little measuring stick, which is this round plastic device, and see what percent the red blood cells make of the total blood volume. Okay, that's just about stopped there. Okay, so let's take off our little lid right here. It just unscrews. And there we have it. Very nice. Now let's see if I can turn this and maybe zoom a little. That way you can see what I'm doing right here. Okay. Now look at the hematocrit tube right here. And I'll tell you what, I'll even pick it up and get it close and see it. Look at how the reds and the plasma have separated from each other. So if you look in the tube itself, you can see where the red blood cells are at, and you can see the watery part at the top. It may not be just exactly clearly focused, to understand that, but you can generally see where the tube's empty, then you got the watery plasma with all the proteins, ions, and other material, and there's the red blood cells at the bottom. So if I set it right back in here, and I take this little measuring stick, I'm gonna make sure I've got blood at the bottom and top, so let me see, let me get it right up, that's what's going to be perfect, right there. Now if we look at this, we can see this comes up, what is that, about 50, and that's 40 right below it, 10, 20, 30, 40. It's showing around 42. Again, there's always variation individual to individual, and males tend to have a higher hematocrit than what females do. So this one's right here at about 42%, so that's separated very nice. You can see the plasma it almost has a little bit of a yellowish tint to it right there. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit more. It looks like it gives a decent picture just the way it is right there, so that's not too bad. But there you can see the watery plasma towards the top, and again, you can see the red blood cells down there towards the bottom. But I know these little numbers are too uh, small for you to see, but it goes from zero to 100. Here's 50 right here in the center. That's the 40 below it, and I can tell it's just a little above the 40. So it's about 42% hematocrit. Again, don't forget hematocrit's not just a number, it's always a percent. So you can see that goes just above the 40. So our red blood cells full of iron, of course, which is heavy, went to the bottom, 
And then of course, there's actually supposed to be a very tiny layer between the reds and the plasma where the white blood cells and platelets are at called the buffy coat, but it's very, very small and hard to see, but you can see the watery plasma at the top. So I'll just remove that one more time. See, that way you can see the separation of plasma and red blood cells. And just hold it up just a little right there once more too. All right, so there's our little hematocrit test. That's all for today.